So here we are, in Belgium, in Flanders in particular, just starting one of the, uh, the Kloisberg, the first climb back in the day when this man beside me was winning that particular race. He, he, he needs real no introduction, arguably the last ever Flandrian, the last living Flandrian, well that's open to debate, none other than Johan Museo, former world champion, three times Paris-Roubaix champion, three times Tour of Flanders champion, double Belgian road race champion. We could go on and on about the Palmares of this guy. But Johan, thank you very much for riding with us today and taking us on a little tour. Yep. But what a place to start on this climb. What first inspired you to become a professional cyclist? Oh. First, you have, you have to know Belgium, that cycling. Yeah. <laughs> that cycling and soccer. Okay. But I think 80% is cycling. So, my bike, my father has professional. My father was with 10 brothers and one okay. sister. Wow, big family. All the 10 brothers has bike. So, uh, it was in the, in the blood. You had that very bad crash in 1998 in the forest of Arenberg um, when you nearly lost your leg. Talk about that and how, and how you came back from that to win Paris-Roubaix again. We know before that it was a very slippery day. There was already a, a good elimination, but you have to be in the front sure. when you go in Arenberg. Yep. So I was in a good position. I, I was in third position and we get in on the normal road at 50k an hour, maybe yeah. more. And then you feel already how it will be if we go on the cobbles and, sure. okay. and the mud. So after a couple meters, I feel immediately it will be difficult to, to control the bike. Okay. And on that moment, I was think already, we, gonna, we go down, we go down. Okay. There is no other reason, no other solution. And maybe a couple seconds later, crack. Down. I got down with my left knee on a cobblestone and it was an open injury. Okay. It was open. But the first reaction that a, a rider has always, he get up, Quite he right. tried to get up get bike, and yeah. you say, where's my bike? Yeah. My bike was on the crossroad. Okay. So I, I asked my bike and then I, I heard something in the knee and I looked down. And I saw like that, it the was open, open wound, like yeah. that, open okay. wound, so. So I was fall in in the of a horse. And nice. that was the problem of the... So you have a blood infection in your... I get angrine, I don't know if the same word in okay. English, angrine. Gang gangrene is the angrene, same, yeah, 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 it's very bad. So I have to, they have to find immediately the right antibiotic. Okay. Three times they come and to say, they say to me, and. My family, we got to amputate the leg. Now, today. So, uh, oh, God. I have got lucky. What result, or what race, do you think gave you the most pleasure? What, what meant the most to you? It's, I bet it must be quite, quite difficult to choose. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult if you have won 11 World Cups. Yeah. Um, two times the World Cup because it doesn't exist anymore, but yeah. I won two times the World Cup. So for a classic rider, if he can win the World Cup, it's something special. Yeah, of course, so yeah. that's mean you're not just on a classic rider for Tour de France or Roubaix. So you have to get results also in San Sebastian or uh, Zurich. Zurich. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I say always the same, the day that you come world champion, yeah. It's a special day, but the year after, if you can wear every race, that jersey, it gives something special. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about your academy. My academy have two parts. That's young people, coach people. Okay. I have also a school in Ostend with young people. Okay. 
road, road riders and also cyclocross, man. Okay. <coughs> because Flanders, it's also cyclocross. Hey, the na national junior cyclocross champion of Belgium as well. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that's one part, okay. coaching young people and help. Yeah. And one word, to give all my experience to the young people yeah. in silence. So I don't want to be uh, at the podium or, or that they say, okay, I work with Johan Musé. No, in silence. I prefer to work like that. Okay, okay. So when you were riding um, as a professional in the mid in the mid '90s, when you were at your best, who uh, was the were the rider that you feared the most? That was your biggest rival? Do you think one or two riders? Um, to be honest, well, I you didn't. Respect, you respected the most, maybe. But I respect everybody, yeah, even sure. the small or big rider. Sure, uh, yeah. But I have, I was respectful for everybody. But I was a rider. I don't look to somebody else. Okay. I did my job, my race. I prefer. Yeah. I prepared for that race. I tried to win. That's it. So there we have it. A ride with the Flandrian myself, King of the Cobbles, I think would be fair to call him. Yeah. Johan Musé, do you like that? King of the Cobbles? Uh, uh, the Lion of Flanders, King of the Cobbles, uh, it doesn't matter for me. It's always nice to hear if somebody say uh, King of the Cobbles, King of the Koppenberg, King of the Tour de Flanders. Sounds good. Well, here we are on the Koppenberg itself, the iconic climb. Yeah, that was pretty hard riding up that, but Johan, all it leaves for me to say is thank you very much for taking me on a ride. You're welcome. And having a word with us. I'm sure the fans at GCN will absolutely love it. But if you'd like some more cobbles, how about clicking just up here where me and Lasty rode the cobbles of Roubaix back in the Tour de France a couple of years back. And for our special look at where are they now, some professionals of the past and what they're doing in the present day, click just down here. And subscribe to GCN. You know it's absolutely free. Click in that little box just there. But for now, from me and Johan, Adios. Hasta luego.